Curious George Gets a Medal by H.A. Ray. This is George. He lived with his friend, the man with the yellow hat. He was a good little monkey and always very curious. George was alone this morning looking at a picture book when the doorbell rang. It was the mailman. Here's a letter for you, he said. Put it on your friend's desk. He'll read it to you when he comes home. George was curious. It was not often that somebody wrote him. Too bad he could not read the letter, but maybe he could write one himself. In the top drawer of the desk, there was a paper and ink and a fountain pen. George sat down on the floor and began to write, but the pen was dry. It needed ink. George would have to fill it. He got a funnel from the kitchen and started pouring ink. But instead of going into the pen, the ink spilled all over and made a big blue puddle on the floor. It was an awful mess. Quickly, George got the blotter from the desk, but that was no help. The puddle grew bigger all the time. George had to think of something else. Why, soap and water, that's what you clean up with. From the kitchen shelf, he got a big box of soap powder and poured it, poured all of the powder over the ink. Then he pulled the garden hose through the window, opened the tap and sprayed water on the powder. Bubbles began to form and then some lather and more lather and more lather and more lather. In no time, the whole room was full of lather. So full indeed that George had to escape in a hurry. When he was safely out of the house, he first turned off the tap. But what next? How could he get rid of all the lather before his friend came home? George sat down in the grass and thought for a long time. Finally, he had an idea. He would get the big shovel and shovel the lather out of the window. But where was the lather? While George had been outside thinking, it had all turned into water. Now the room looked like a lake and the furniture like islands in it. The shovel was no use. A pump was what George needed to get the water out and he knew just where to find one. He had seen a portable pump at the farm down the road. A farmer was away working in the fields. Nobody noticed George when he got the pump out of the shed. It was heavy. He would need help to pull it all the way back to the house. Maybe he could tie the goat to the pump and make her pull it. But just as George was about to slip the loop over the goat's head, he was hurled through the air and landed near a pen full of pigs. The biggest pig was standing near the gate. What if George opened the gate just enough to let him out? The big pig could easily pull a small pump. Carefully, George lifted the latch. And before he knew it, all the pigs had burst out of the pen, grunting and squealing and trying to get away as fast as they could. George was delighted. He had never seen anything like it. For the moment, all of his troubles were forgotten. But now the pigs were all gone and not a single one was left to help him with the pump. There they all go. Luckily, there were cows grazing nearby. Cows were gentle and strong. It would mean nothing to a cow to pull the pump for him. This time, George was right. The cow did not mind being tied to the pump. She even let him climb on her back and off they went. George was glad. Now he would soon be home. Pump out the room and everything would be all right. Meanwhile, the farmer and his son had heard the squealing of the pigs. They rushed home from the fields and now had their hands full catching all the pigs. Not until the last pig was safely back in the pen did they have time to look around. And what did they see? A little monkey riding on their cow, making off with their pump. The chase was on. George and the cow were ahead at first, but the pump was slowing them down. The farmers were getting closer 
and closer. Now they had almost caught up with them, but where was George? Here he was, hiding in a shirt. The farmers had run past him, but on their way home, they had to come back over the same road. George did not feel safe in his hiding place. Just then, a truck came rattling down the road. George jumped aboard, monkeys are good at jumping, and was gone before the farmers had a chance to see him. The truck says Museum of Science on it. That sounds interesting. The truck drove to a part of town that George had never seen before. At last, it stopped in front of a large building. It was a museum. George did not know what a museum was. He was curious. While the guard was busy reading his paper, George slipped inside. He walked up the steps and into a room full of all sorts of animals. At first, George was scared, but then he noticed that they did not move. They were not alive. They were stuffed animals put into the museum so everybody could get a good look at them. In the next room, George saw something so enormous it took his breath away. It was a dinosaur. George was not scared this time. He knew it was not real. He looked at the dinosaur and then at the baby dinosaur and then he saw the palm tree full of nuts. George liked nuts. Suddenly he felt very hungry. He had missed lunch that day. He would climb up and just then he heard footsteps. He had to hide again, but where? A family came in to look at the dinosaur. They paid no attention to the little monkey who was standing there. The monkey did not move. He stood so still, they thought he was just another stuffed animal. George was glad when they were gone. Now he could pick the nuts. He climbed up the dinosaur's neck and started to pull, but the nuts would not come off. George did not know that they were not real either. He pulled harder and harder, and the tree began to sway. Crash! Down came the tree on the dinosaur's head. Down came the dinosaur, and down came George. Guards came rushing in from all sides, and underneath the fallen dinosaur, they found a little monkey. They pulled him out of there and brought him to Professor Wiseman, who was the director of the museum. Professor Wiseman was terribly angry. Lock that knock, naughty monkey up right away, he said, and take him back to the zoo. He must have run away from there. George was carried off in a cage. He felt so ashamed that he almost wished he were dead. Suddenly the door opened. George, somebody shouted. It was his friend, the man with the yellow hat. It seems you got yourself into a lot of trouble today, he said, but maybe this letter here will get you out of it. It's from Professor Wiseman. He needs your help for an experiment. I found it on my desk at home, but I couldn't find you anywhere. So I came over here to talk to the professor. And this is what the letter said. Dear George, a small spaceship has been built by our experimental station. It is too small for a man, but could carry a little monkey. Would you be willing to go up in it? I have never met you, but I hear that you are a bright little monkey who can do all sorts of things, and that is just what we need. We want you to do something nobody has ever done before. Sail out of a spaceship in flight, or bail out of a spaceship in flight. When we flash you a signal, you will have to open the door and bail out with the help of emergency rockets. We hope you are willing and that your friend will permit you to go. Gratefully yours, Professor Wiseman, Director of the Science Museum. So you are George, Professor Wiseman said. If I had only known, of course, everything will be forgiven if you're willing to go. They got the smallest size spacesuit for George and all the other things he needed for the flight. Then they helped him put them on and showed him how to use them. When everything was ready, a truck drove up with a special television mounted onto it to watch the flight. They all got on and were off to the launching site. They checked all the controls of the spaceship, especially the lever that opened the door. George tried it too. The great moment had come. George waved goodbye and went aboard. The door was closed. Professor Wiseman began to count. Five, four, three, two, one, go. He pressed the button and the 
ship rose in the air, slowly at first, and then faster and faster, and higher and higher until they could no longer see it in the sky. But on the screen, they saw George clearly all the time. Now the moment had come for George to bail out. Professor Wiseman flashed the signal. They watched the screen. George did not move. Why didn't he pull the lever? In a few seconds, it would be too late. The ship would be lost in outer space with George in it. They waited anxiously. At last, George began to move. Slowly, as if in a daze, he was groping for the lever. Would he reach it in time? There, he had grabbed it. The door opened. Hurrah, George was on his way. Out of the blue, an open parachute came floating down to earth. The truck raced over to the spot where George would land. What a welcome for George. Professor Wiseman hung a big golden medal around his neck. Because, he said, you are the first living being to come back to Earth from a space flight. And on the medal it said, to George, the first space monkey. Then a newspaperman took his picture and everybody shouted and cheered, even the farmer and his son and the kind woman from next door who had worked for hours to get the water out of the room. I'm proud of you, George, said the man with the yellow hat. I guess the whole world is proud of you today. It was the happiest day of George's life. The end.